Good morning, everyone. We will study today the third uh, talk uh, in the book selections of Les Coutets from Les Coutets Sichot. This week's Torah portion is Itro. Itro is a, the name of a priest in Midian who had seven daughters and seven names. And he was lucky to be the father-in-law of Moshe, also El Azar, Aaron's son married one of his daughters too. So he was a father-in-law, very famous, very important. Like Page 303. Commenting on the verse in this week's Torah reading, <clears throat> Isro said, blessed is God who saved you. Our sages state, before the sages statement, Ethro comes and Moshe goes out to greet him. He brings the wife Zipporah and the two sons, Eliezer and Gershom, to back to Moshe. Moshe goes out with Aaron and the entire Jewish camp. He's going out to greet Ethro and they bring him back and they have a feast. And Moshe is the one who is the waiter. He's actually serving everybody. Moshe shares with Ethro all that happened to them. Rashi says the war of Amalek, the split of the sea. And Ethro says, turning back, it says, blessed is God who saved you. I'll say to stay. It is shameful for Moshe and the 600,000 Jews who left Egypt that no one had said, blessed is God, until Yitzro came and said, blessed is God. The matter says it's a shame, shameful. And Moshe and Yitzro, they never say blessed is God. And Yitzro is the first one who said it. As the Rebbe, I'm sorry, the Rebbe brings our sages comment requires clarification for how can it be that no one had said blessed is God beforehand after the miracle of the splitting of the sea of reeds, Moshe and the children of Israel recited the song to God in celebration and thanksgiving. So they did bless God as Yashir, a prayer we recite every morning at prayer. How is it possible to say that they have never said, blessed is God? It cannot be said that the intent is that it was shameful that the Jews blessed God only for the splitting of the sea and not for the exodus from Egypt, for were that the case, it would have been necessary to emphasize that point. Maybe they blessed God only for the miracle of slain the sea, of not, not coming out of Egypt, not the ten plagues. And Ethro is the first one who thanks God for it. So that it doesn't make sense for a simple reason. The Torah doesn't say it. It should have been said specifically in that way. Otherwise, it, 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 because the Torah does not specify that the singing and the praising of God was done specifically only for the splitting of the sea, it must be that it went for all the miracles that they faced until now. The above difficulty can be resolved based on the Zohar statement that the Torah was not given to the Jewish people until Israel came and offered thanks to God. The Zohar says, Immediately after Yitro says, blessed is God, and now I know God is greater from all other deities, all other idols, that's when we read about the preparation for the giving of the Torah, and the Torah was given the Ten Commandments this week's portion. Why? It was a prerequisite. Only after Yitro, thank God, it is the time for God to give the Torah. When Yitro came and said, blessed is God, who saved you from Egypt, from the sea, and from the Amalekites, now... I know that God is greater than all deities. This caused God to be revealed in his glory in the highest form, in the higher realms and in the lower realms. Afterwards, he gave the Torah in its fullness. Says the Zohar that the reason that one story appears after the other is because one caused the other. Only after Israel came and blessed God and thanked God for the miracles, he caused God to reveal himself not only in the higher realms, but also in lower realms. And by that, by doing so, he revealed himself on Mount Sinai, given the Torah. Was, was Jitro a member of the tribe at this point or not? No, he was a Midianite. That's why. But he, he did, right? But he, he did yeah, circumcise yeah. himself. What do you know? Yeah, that? He, he yeah. Yitro became a Jew. Well, okay. He Here also an explanation is required. 
for how was it that the virtues of Moshe, Aaron, and the 600,000 Jews and the spiritual achievements prior to the arrival of Esau were not sufficient for the Torah to be given to the Jews? Why was it that they were found worthy of it only after Esau came and gave thanks to God, saying God is greater than all the, 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 the deities? You, you say that the Torah, Zohar says the Torah is given only after Esau, thank God. Doesn't make sense. The Medrash said it's a shameful for the Jewish people because nobody said it before. Says the Rebbe, the Zohar also adds that the reason the Torah was given because Yitro came and says, now I know God is greater than all. And he said things. I mean, come on, the Jewish people are deserving of the Torah. That's why they went to Egypt. If you look at the story, why is they, they going to Egypt? Why God told Abraham they're going to be enslaved for 400 years? They didn't commit a sin. They didn't do anything wrong. It was to purify the sin of Adam before God gives the Torah in this universe. They needed to, to purify. And they are the ones who guarantees the Torah. They are the ones who receive the Torah. Therefore, they have to cleanse themselves and rid themselves of the, the, the defilement of Eve and Adam by eating from the tree of knowledge. If it's so, why is it that Esau is the one who is the catalyst that makes it happen? The importance of Israel's phrase of God can be understood by first resolving the following question. The Torah reading begins, Israel, the leader of Midian, Kohen Midian, the leader of Midian, the rabbi is not going to translate the word Kohen in the way that you might want. He calls him the leader of Midian. Moshe's father-in-law heard everything that God did and then he decided to take his daughter, Zipporah, the wife of Moshe, and the two sons, and bring them to Moshe, and he arrives at the Jewish people. Ask the Rebbe, why does the verse emphasize that Yitro was a leader of Midian? Seemingly, why you can say Yitro of Midian heard all God did, and he came. It says Yitro, the leader of Midian, Kohen Midian. Seemingly, it should have used more concise wording. Israel, Moshe's father-in-law, heard. Moreover, there are two interpretations to the title Kohen Midian, as translated above, leader. That is, Israel was a leader of Midian. He was one of the ministers, very important high officials of Midian. And B, priest. Kohen usually translates to priest. He served as a priest to false deities. See Rashi's later statement that he was familiar with all the false deities in the world. According to the second interpretation, the reason he is called the priest of Midian is difficult to understand. Did the Torah intend to speak up favorably of Israel? Moshe, and I'm sorry, did the Torah intend to speak unfavorably of Israel? Moshe's father in law? This question becomes particularly pointed since the con content of the Torah reading indicates the opposite, that the intent is to praise Israel. So now the Rebbe is asking one more question. So the Rebbe is loading us with questions later on. One, one understanding will solve all of them. The first question we had, the Medrash says that it's shameful for the Jewish people in Moshe. They never says, blessed is God. As the Rebbe, they said, as Yashir, they bless God and thank God for all the miracles. Second, the Zohar said, that the Torah is given in this week's portion after Yitro says, thank, thank God for all that he had done, because now I know he's the greatest of all other false gods. That's the catalyst that made God agree to come down and give the Torah. It doesn't make sense. It requires explanations because the Jewish people themselves should be worthy of receiving the Torah. The Rebbe is bringing now a third question. The way the Torah describes the story, the introduction, that Yitro, the priest of Midian, heard all that God has done, and now he's coming to visit the Jewish people. How do you, why are you embarrassing the guy, especially that you're going to talk so favorably about him, that he put the Jewish and Moshe to, Jewish people and Moshe to shame, that he's the one who made God agree to come and out on my Sinai. So why do you call him Kohen Midian? The word Kohen is translated in the Medrash and in the Talmud in two ways. One, that he was a high minister in Midian, and that's not derogatory, but there is no need for it. And the second one is that he was a priest for false gods. Mm -hmm. If he was a priest, why does the Torah bother to mention uh, unfavorably about a man that you want us to speak about all the, the accolades and all his achievements? 
maybe it wants to do it in a way that they say, in spite of the fact that he's a priest, he was something to really love and come to and come to Moshe. Okay, so I need to address that. You made a comment before too, and I I, I did not wanted to address. Mo Yitro at this point did not convert to Judaism. Yitro did not attend the giving of the Torah. We do, there is a dispute when this happened. According to Rashi, it happens after Yom Kippur, meaning the Torah was given already, meaning the golden scene was already atoned, and the second set of tablets are coming. So Yitro was not present when the Torah was given because God did not allow any stranger that did not suffer the labor and, and, and slavery of Egypt to participate because God said, the Levim, didn't the Levim is a good question, but that's why, because they study Torah and the study of Torah is much harder than physical labor. What about all the people that came Gershon and Eliezer did not, were not there because they did, were not born in Egypt. What the about, sons of Moshe were not there. What about all the people that, the converts, or whatever, the people that came with? According the to the Talmud, they were not allowed to be at Mount Sinai, uh, encamped in Mount they Sinai. They had to be away, yes. Mm -hmm. So therefore, so and by the way, there is a dispute if Yitro converted. He said, and now I know God is greatest of all other gods. Moshe is begging him to stay. We read later on in the book of Number, Numbers and said, I'm sorry, I have to go back to my homeland. Now, one commentary commentator explained, I'm going back to my homeland to convert my family and bring them back. Another commentator say, no, you went back to his homeland. He didn't, he was very hard for him to let go of the place where he was born and raised, even though he was excommunicated. As soon as he rejected all their false gods, mm -hmm. they 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 banned them, they, they got rid of them. They would not do any business with them, they wouldn't assist them. All these farmers, all these shepherds were gone. That's why his daughters had to be the shepherds. Mm -hmm. But back to our discussion here. Itlo is not converting, so you, there is nothing to praise about him that despite all that he converted, he didn't convert. It's not, not here in this week's portion for sure, he did not convert yet. Later. Later on, he, according to some, he did, according to others, he didn't. But what did you say? Well, for him, well, in him being there, he agreed that there's one God and much he accepts that there is this God is the only God, and he says it. Now I know. But the question is, why call him Kohen Midian, the priest of Midian, which is an unfavorable title, mm -hmm. especially in, in, in lieu of what he's going to be saying? Uh, okay. I'm looking at it from another way. Despite the fact that he's Kohen Midian, he decided to give it all up and come to Moshe. Okay. And I would say that at this point, he rejected even being a Kohen Midian. According to the explanation that he was a idol worshiper, he was the priest. By that time, he already rejected it all. Yes. He wasn't a priest anymore. It's just an old title, like a PhD, a retired doctor who comes to Florida. He's not allowed to practice, or, but he still, you, she, he, they wouldn't give that up under PhD by title. But the, the fact is, they cannot. Well, you, you said that Moshe's kids were also weren't at the mountain. That's for sure. For sure. Okay. According to the Medrash and the Talmud, I think anyone who was not enslaved in Egypt was not allowed to be at Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. To explain, in truth, the verse does not describe Israel as Kohen Midian to diminish his importance. On the contrary, it seeks to describe his greatness and the esteem with which he had previously been regarded in Midian. The fact that we add Kohen Midian is to bring the greatness of Yitro, not to degrade him. And let's explain. This emphasizes the magnitude of his character. He was willing to forego his position and come to convert because his heart motivated him to go out to the desert, a wasteland, to hear words of Torah. So some some of you uh, were on the same line. You said it, no? That he came abandoning all of the other deities, all other god, false gods, 
for the sake of studying Torah in the desert, desolate place, there was no man there. And there is, so therefore it's much greater when someone he's just a homeless or a simple man versus someone who is a great leader and everybody follows him and he has a lot of honor and respect. But when he realizes it's false, he abandons it, stands to lose friends, family, income, and does it for the sake of studying Torah. He says he had the heroes of Torah. You have to assume he was already given. Yeah, but there's the urge of Torah from Moshe. <clears throat> the Torah was given. Ethro was not at Mount Sinai. Yes, yes. But, but so some say it was before the giving of Torah because that's the order of the text in this week's portion. Right after that, you read about the Ten Commandments, God yeah. coming down. But according to Rashi, Yitro came after Yom Kippur, the day after Yom Kippur. That's the only time Moshe is sitting to judge the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And in therefore, Moshe, he, he came way after the Torah was given. No matter what, all uh, uh, holds that Mo Yitro was not there at the giving of the Torah. But he, he, was, he was on the 40-year journey? According to it? some, no. Mm -hmm. According to others, yes. There are two opinions. The story about him giving motion to the judicial system. It's in this explosion. Yeah, so that would have been that, right that here that at this point. With him going home, at at this point, okay. right after that, he came. The second interpretation of Kohen Midian that he served as a priest to a false deity reflects the greatness of his knowledge and understanding. For initially, the pagans who erred regarding the worship of false deities and became attached to them were primarily motivated by the understanding and knowledge. As Rambam writes, the Rebbe now is going to explain that idol worshippers, especially those priests, the representatives of idol worshippers, they were not stupid. They were people who were astrologers and they were able to gaze in the sky and see the constellation and know when there is a high tide, when the moon is going to bless the crop. They were very powerful tools and that's why they worship them, which is very wrong. Says the Rambam, they said, God created stars and spheres with which to control the world. He placed them on high and treated them with honor. Accordingly, it is fitting to praise and glorify them and to treat them with honor. They perceive this to be the will of God. We call it, they call them gods of God. In other words, they say God created the universe. This is a central God that created everything. He then created ministers, the minister of health, the minister of children, the minister of wealth, the minister of rain, the minister of happiness, the minister of peace. And they are up in the sky. He gave them the power. Why did he give them the power? Because you want them to control. So when we worship those, de those deities, when we beg them or we do sacrifices to them, it's God's will. There is nothing wrong. That's the way they understood. Abraham, by the way, is the first in, to believe in monotheism, that there is only one God and everybody else is, is no value. Just like in a, a kingdom of democracy, you have a parliament and you have ministers. You have defense minister, you have health minister, you have educational minister. You have to respect each one of them. And if you have an issue with education, you go to the educational minister. If you have a fina financial issue, you go to the finance minister. With God, it's not the case. But that's the way they perceived all the powers that exist up there. In truth, God bestows divine vitality upon this physical world through an interact and an intricate system of intermediaries, including the stars and the constellations. As our sages say, there is not a blade of grass in this world that does not have a con constellation above that strikes it and tells it grow. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it is forbidden to worship these heavenly entities because they do not have free choice or any will of their own. They are merely like an axe in the hand of the chopper to carry out the will of the king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he. Now the rabbi is going to go back to Ithro. In other words, the, when we talk about idol worshippers in the, ancient, the, in the world, ancient world, they saw and they were able to connect with very powerful uh, stars and uh, parts of the constellation 
that will bestow blessings to them or to the universe. It is an idol worshiping because God wants us to worship him and no one else because they are not acting on, out of free will, but only on, on behalf of God's order. Just as there are intermediaries in this physical world, that is, the stars and the constellations through which vitality is conveyed to the world, so too there are spiritual intermediaries, that is, angels in the sublime worlds of Bria and Yetzirah. Indeed, there is an extensive spiritual hierarchy as explained regarding the verse. There is a watchman above the watchman, meaning, and the, I'm sorry, and there are lighter one over them, higher one over them. The intermediaries to, on this on the physical plane are utterly and entirely nullified to any, and anyone who subscribe ascribed any independent power and dominion to them is a worshiper of false deities. Similarly, we are warned to be con conscious that even the intermediaries in the loftier spiritual realms are merely like an ax in the hand of the chopper. Indeed, the loftier the level of the intermediary, the more likely one is to err regarding it. And this, on this basis, if anybody has any questions, I'll hold off for a moment. On this basis, the statement that it will recognize all the false deities in the world can be understood as meaning that he understood and knew of all the intermediaries, including those on the loftier spiritual planes. However, as the priest of Midian, he erred and conceived of these intermediaries as possessing power and authority independent of God. This constituted the worship of false deities from the above, we can appreciate Israel's great intellectual capacity. So when I say God is the greatest, or anybody else who has no clue about the constellation, there is no, no big deal. You don't know anything else. But someone who is invested and had great knowledge, he was a leader, becoming a leader, it means that he was able to actually know very well how the heavenly beings are acting. And he knew exactly which angel is responsible for what and what star is responsible for what. And yet to come and say there is, they are false, that's an admission worthy that God would say, now it's time for me to come down. <clears throat> Hence, the intent in describing Israel as Kohen Midian, that is a priest of Midian, is to highlight his praise. According to the first interpretation, he was respectful, respected leader in the land of Midian and was accorded all the honor of the world. In other words, and yet he was able to, is willing to abandon all the honor and all the respect and all the, uh, everything the people offer them and to come to the desert and be with the Jewish people like another one of the members in a physical sense. Similarly, the second interpretation that he was a priest to false deities and recognize all false, de false deities points to his supremacy in intellectual understanding, both are true. Nevertheless, he so gave up all this greatness and prominence and came to Sinai to convert. Is that clear so far? <laughs> so the third question is addressed. Why the Torah used the title, the priest of Midian, either that he was a minister or that he was a worshiper, a leader in worshiping idols, because it's not to degrade an unfavorable title. It's actually to bring out his greatness, that either that he was a minister and he was willing to give up all his friends and all his uh, respected honors to be one of the tribe of a man, no, man, no, no land people that reside in the desert, or that he was in a spiritual sense, a, a priest that knew how the constellations work, and yet he figured that they are false and they have no choice of their own but they are acting on behalf of God like a uh, puppet. And therefore there is no room for worship in any of them. And the basis of the above, now we still have the first two. Remember that he put to shame the Jewish people and Moshe by saying, blessed is God. And the second one, he's the one that caused the catalyst that make the Torah to be given. And the basis of the above explanation that Ithra possessed great in wisdom and knowledge 
it is possible to comprehend the Zohar statement that it was specifically through Israel's knowledge of God's greatness that the Torah was given. In interpretation of the verse, I saw that there is an advantage in wisdom to wisdom over foolishness. The Zohar explains that Isra, Isron, Isron means advantage, translates as advantage, can also mean higher dimension. In other words, when this is King Solomon says, a higher dimension of the wisdom of holiness is drawn down to come and come about specifically because of the foolishness. That is from the refinement of the wisdom of unholiness, which is referred to as foolishness in, in comparison with holy wisdom, and that that is more appreciated. In other words, you do not appreciate your health until someone gets sick. Mm -hmm. You do not appreciate light until you have experienced darkness. That's part of the reason we have evil and darkness. If you had no nighttime, you wouldn't understand what light is. You wouldn't appreciate what, what's the big deal. I, I don't know. But as soon as someone is not well for a while, what happens? Now there is ethron. Ethron means it's not ethro, it's it's the same letters, but it's all ethron means advantage. Advantage also means he calls it a what wisdom, higher wisdom, a deeper understanding, deeper comp comprehension of that into an idea when it comes from a point of the opposite. So if you are dealing with a foolish person for a long time and then finally you find someone who's smart you say oh gosh i'm so relieved i'm so appreciative because even though that person might be an ordinary person but the fact that you are uh, interacting with someone who had no idea what you're talking about and had no good understanding when you find someone who can relate to you and can understand you now there is a much greater appreciation than if you didn't have the experience in the past in other words bad experience is for the benefit of appreciating and having a much deeper connection with a good experience. Now we can understand the way the Torah is that I said. The Torah was given, if it was given to the Jews, they knew nothing else. They had no clue about the opposite. The only when you have someone who has reached and searched up in spiritual realms, up in the sky, and he comes and says, there's nobody like, like you, our God. That's when it's a much deeper understanding of what God is about. When Israel, a great sage, possessing the wisdom of unholiness, came to study the Torah and declared, now I know that God is greater than all deities, as Rashi's interpretation cited above, he brought about a refinement of the wisdom of unholiness and its transformation into wisdom of holiness. He converted unholiness, his research and worship of idols, and made it holiness because now his appreciation to God is far deeper because it comes from knowledge. It comes from experience. And now he sees the difference. The contrast is very clear there. Israel's recognition of God came as a result of his detailed knowledge of, of the wisdom of unholiness and its inherent inadequacy. As such, the knowledge both served as a prod and gave him tools to appreciate the knowledge of holiness, such a transformation of foolishness as a matter of course led to increased light in the wisdom of holiness. In other words, the foolishness had led to a deeper connection to holiness. Without the foolishness, you wouldn't have that type of connection. So if someone gets, I'm going to use an example, it's politically incorrect, but if someone had a relationship and they got divorced, the second time around, they learn to be very cautious. They learn to guard themselves. They, le they learn to take it one step at a time and not be so uh, open and free because they appreciate the relationship. They appreciate the love. They appreciate what they get in a much deeper sense than someone who never experienced divorce. Am I correct on that? Very correct. Uh, Very correct. Uh, oh. However, however, I'm so happy. However, dissenting remark, I understand from the data that second marriages have a higher divorce rate than first marriages. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Huh? He said it's less than the third. <laughs> Oh, just a minute, Dick. I want to thank you. It's a very good point. 
I appreciate it. I wish it weren't true. Where'd you get that information? This book says, um, but it says that uh, to allow the color to be given. So he says it before the color is given, right? So the first alia is happening. According before. to this opinion, it was before God gave the Torah. How could it possibly be any other way? I would hopefully satisfy you and many other questions. That's why I'm not addressing that actually. Mm -hmm. Ethro appeared twice. Anybody knows that? Mm -hmm. According mm -hmm. to both opinions. He came once to bring Tsipora and the two sons, mm -hmm. stayed for maybe a week and mm -hmm. left. Then he came back. Okay. According to one opinion, mm -hmm. he came before the Torah was given. He said, now I know God is greater, mm -hmm. and he left. Mm -hmm. He came a year later when they left Sinai Desert, the area. Mm -hmm. According to second opinion, both time he came after the Torah was given, Rashi, after Yom Kippur, he said, uh, now I know, and then he left, and he came back later on, either to convert or to visit. But if it was after the Torah was given, then clearly that statement couldn't have been required to give the Torah. So this whole concept is the same. According to the second opinion. This whole thing is the same. Uh, yeah, but yeah. this is okay. part of the time. Well, well acco no, according to second opinion, could be that he came before and he came again after. But that's the first opinion. He came before he came. Uh, and the second one. He why? Came after both times. And he yeah. came after both times. No, no, no. So I would say. I think I might be wrong, but I would say that perhaps he came, according to both, he came before the Torah was given, he left, right. and then he came back. Okay, that's the text. And then the Torah is given anyway. Now, right. We did show that he came twice. How do we know that? In Bamidbar, when Moshe is begging him not to leave, and he says, no, I have to return. It yeah. couldn't be that the same story that he's just repeating in Bamidbar about what happened in the family. Could be. Bam in the Chumash Bamidbar. If you get me a Chumash, I'll show you. What? I said, I, I missed that boat. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You but it, not. But is it the boat that we, you know, that we had the two people playing credit for? Here it is. Here it is. Mm. Okay. Chapter 10, 11, verse 1. Moshe said to Chovev, the son of Reuel of Midian, of Mi the Midian. Reuel was his father, the grandfather of Tzipora. Moshe's father in law. Oh, it says Moshe's father in law. Mm -hmm. We are traveling very soon to the place about which God says, I will give it to you, the Holy Land. Come with us and we will treat you well. For God has spoken of good things for Israel. He said to him, Ethro said to Moshe, I am not going. Rather, I shall go to my land and my birthplace. Moshe said, please don't leave us. For you know all the miracles associated with our encampments in the desert which you have been an eyewitness, if you go with us, then we will grant you use of part of the good land which God is granting us. And there is no say what happened. So, but the question is, where does it say, and it said right there that you witnessed with us, you saw the miracles that, that in the desert. It sounds like it's a retelling of the first story, and the first story talks about mm -hmm. that, the, that he was there for the giving of the talk. Yeah. You're telling me he was not there. He was there for a moment, then he comes the first time. According to Rashi, this is already after the Torah was given, so it's a second time Ito is coming. That's right. Okay. Okay. Example. But it's interesting that in his I honor, I think the uh, the Torah was given to his Parsha, no? He needed him to give the Torah. What's the question? In his honor, it's the Torah is given in Parsha's Israel. Right. The Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Because? 
only when he says, now I know God is greater than all other false gods, God can tell. Now we understand why. It's like the deeper appreciation for holiness from unholiness, as we discussed here. Second marriage is my example, which is incorrect. But <laughs> don't go uh, back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am sure you understand. There is a phrase in Hebrew from the Talmud, Nichva Mirotrim Nizhar Miposhrim. Someone who got burnt from boiling water is going to be careful of lukewarm water. In other words, mm -hmm. anytime you have lukewarm water, no, you have no problem. You're going to touch it. You're going to, but once you get burned with hot boiling water, you're going to be very careful. Even if it's you are told it's lukewarm, you're going to be very careful before. Nichva, nichva is burnt. Mirotrim roteach is boiling. Nizhar zahir leizahir means to be careful. Is careful. Mi poshrim posher is lukewarm. So, in other words, once you have an appreciation, that's in a negative, but once you have an appreciation from the unholiness, the holiness becomes much deeper connection with, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like the Baal Teshuva, the penitent, is far greater than a tzaddik who never seen, because he's not been to the dark side of the universe, so they don't appreciate what they have. So that's what they're, now we are in the middle here, right? We, do, we, we didn't finish. As a matter of course, this, this situation of Ithra saying that led to increased light and in the wisdom of holiness. In this way, it served as catalyst, as a catalyst for the giving of the Torah, bringing God's wisdom to this material plane. Ithra's acknowledgement of God drew an additional and loftier dimension of light into the wisdom of holiness. That additional light made it possible for the Torah to be given on the material on this material plane, because the, that transition required that light be drawn down from the very lofty source. So when do you get deeper into the relationship or deeper into the knowledge when it comes from the opposite side? Just why when you want to jump, you stand and you jump. You want to jump farther, you have to take a few steps back. Why do you take a few steps back for the oomph? It gives you the energy. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you call it in the book of Proverbs? Seven steps. A righteous man will fall back before he moves one step higher. Sheva yipol tzadik vekam. Seven steps you got to fall down before you can climb one extra step. Mm -hmm. It's not seven to move seven. It's not going back one to move one. You're going back very far. Why? The, uh, to ascend to a higher level, you need to have a much deeper connection, much deeper understanding. And that uh, happens in the side of unholiness. By the way, Judaism is very unique in that. I don't want to delve because we don't have time, much time, but I think it's important to share. In Judaism, negativity, sin is wrong and require repentance. And there is punishment, consequences for misbehaving, no doubt. But it doesn't make the person evil. Why? Because actually the reason God created it is to motivate us to have a much deeper bond with God mm -hmm. as a result of the sin. In other words, everybody in Judaism, committing a sin is no big deal. Even when I grew up, it's no big deal because it's human. What's unique of being Jewish is to acknowledge that we did something wrong and learn from it not to repeat. Learn from it to have a stronger bond to stay away. By the way, all of the AA is based on that. All of the, the programs that are for addicted people, for addiction, is all about that. Learn from your past. Realize that you are weak. You need help. You are able to achieve it. In other words, if that person did not get into the addiction, whatever addiction it might be, they wouldn't be a good and kind person as they are today. And I've seen it firsthand with many people. That's a very Jewish mm. idea that you won't find, especially not in Christianity. In Judaism, sin is wrong. Sin, we will pay for it. Sin is something we should stop. But after, we should say to ourselves, if I sin, let me turn it into a push that gets me closer to God. 
the experience should be a much better experience right now. And this is what Tohu mm -hmm. from Tikkun, exactly. That's why God created Tohu, the world of chaos, and it fell apart, and then God created Tikkun. He learned from the experience of the full God. It is not necessary, it's for us. There is a well-known Hasidic concept, the preparatory actions that served as a catalyst to bring about given outcome must resemble the outcome one, one seeks to bring about. Accordingly, in other words, when you prepare a project, the preparation itself must resemble some of the actual goal or project or desire. Accordingly, further clarification is necessary to elucidate what is meant by the refinement of the wisdom of unholiness and how it served as catalyst for the giving of the Torah. Says the Rebbe. The Rebbe is going to explain the connection between Ethros being a priest to other gods, to the giving of the Torah, but in a way that will help us understand the first question, I believe. But it's already too late. What the Rebbe is going to say is that the idea, I'm going to show with you based on my memory. The Rabbi is going to say, what happened on the giving of the Torah? God had created a strong uh, a boundary or barrier between upper spiritual realms and physical material realms. They were totally separated. There was no connection. When God came down on Mount Sinai, the most spiritual that's possible be came down to connect to the physical realm. That's why he gave us commandments that are involved physical and material objects. You celebrate Shabbat with wine. You put on filling with animal hide. Mm -hmm. You are helping a poor with coins. It must be, if I do it by war, with words spiritually, it has no value. Prior to the giving of the Torah, Jacob uh, was able to put on filling by saying prayers or chopping some wood. It was more of a lofty because the separation still existed. So the idea of the giving of the Torah is to connect the upper and lower realms together. Says the Rebbe, the preparation for it was Ethro. Why? Because he was a priest that connected spiritual realms. And he comes to the Jewish people and say, it means nothing. It has no value. The Jewish people had no knowledge of that. They never reached that far. Only when someone comes and says the false gods that are up in higher realms have no value, that's when God can come, come, come down from upper, uh, upper realms and connect to this universe. And that will explain the first question. He wrote down the Shrina. He caused the Shrina to come, come down. down. That's the idea that he put to shame the Jewish people. He came from a point of such deep defilement that the Jewish people never reached. Remember, we talked about that the benefit and advantage to wisdom is from foolishness. Mm -hmm. Foolishness is dark, is evil. Wisdom is holiness. The Jewish people if they did thank God, but the thanking of God is based on what they saw in this physical universe. When Ethro comes, when he appreciates God, it's based on the spiritual higher realms and his knowledge there. In other words, his level of defilement and darkness is far greater than the Jewish people. And therefore, no one ever did that because no one of the Jewish people ever reached that level of defilement. That's why the Torah had to be given, not just when the Jewish people thank God of the split of the sea, because splitting of the sea is all in this physical world. All the miracles that happen, and they thank God for it, they never thank God for something comparing to the spiritual realms. It's all material behavior and changes in the universe. A Malachite war, the split of the sea, the ten plagues. Yitro comes to appreciate God in comparing to the spiritual realms. And therefore, he is unique that he put to shame the Jewish people because of his lofty appointment as Kohen Midian, as priest of Midian. Now we can understand all three questions. How come the Midrash says that no one ever thanked God, said bless God? Everybody said bless God, but they blessed God and the level of this physical universe. He came from a spiritual lofty level. Now we understand why the Zohar said that this was an introduction and the catalyst for the giving of the Torah, because there has to be a, uh, the darkness leads to a much greater appreciation for light. Only Onitro, the priest of Midian, 
say that now we appreciate the light to appreciate God much, much greater. And now comes the third question. How come the Torah assign him a title of the priest of Midian? It is to show the level of uh, how far he reached and therefore he's the one who caused the Torah to be given and he's the one who blessed God in a level that nobody else can do it for him. Now we understand why the Torah was given to close of Ito. Now we understand why the name of the portion is Ito. Because it's not just another human being coming and saying thank you. It's a whole different level. And thank God willing, we'll come in the next week.